please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance and remain standing for the singing of the first verse of the National Anthem. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Please be seated. The President of the University. <laughs> Mr. Rector, members of the Board of Visitors, Secretary Mabus, ladies and gentlemen, welcome. Today marks the end of the 185th academic session. These exercises are the university's most joyful occasion when we gather to award degrees and to celebrate the achievements of the graduating class. Our music this morning has been provided by the 392nd Army Band from Fort Lee, Virginia, under the direction of Chief Warrant Officer 5, Charles H. Volpurst. And the colors were presented by Army, Navy, and Air Force ROTC students. Let's give them all a hand. As we begin, I would like to recognize several members of our leadership team who will soon step down from their posts. Ed Howell is stepping down as Vice President and Chief Executive Officer of the Medical Center next month. He will continue to teach in the Public Health Science Department. Three of our academic deans are completing their tenure as deans and will return to the faculty. Harry Harding, Dean of the Batten School. Kim Tanzer, Dean of the School of Architecture. And Meredith Wu, Dean of the College and Graduate School of Arts and Sciences. All of them have influenced the university in profound ways, and I am grateful for their service. Today's ceremony is a celebration of the efforts of families as well as students. For parents and step-parents and foster parents whose sons and daughters receive degrees today, 
We acknowledge your commitments that began long before your students came to study here. Our admiration extends to grandparents, aunts, uncles, and friends who supported, nurtured, and encouraged these men and women in their academic careers. We also recognize the spouses and children of some of our students who made sacrifices and offered encouragement to make this day possible. Will the students please join me in applause for your family members? These final exercises celebrate the contributions of our teaching, research, and support faculty, and the staff members who work in many different occupations across the grounds. Each diploma today symbolizes the vitality of our faculty's endeavors, their passion for learning, their efforts to engage others in intellectual discourse, their ability to inspire the pursuit of knowledge. Staff members provide crucial support for the academic enterprise. Our graduating students are beneficiaries of the hard work and dedication of our faculty and staff. Students, will you join me in a round of applause for faculty and staff members who guided and supported you? Of course, the greatest accomplishment belongs to those of you who take your degrees today. You have earned your degrees at a university that stands as a national and global symbol of excellence in public education. You participated thoughtfully and actively in building foundations of quality within the university for today and for tomorrow, an effort that adds a durable value to the degrees you receive today. You committed yourselves to values that define this university. Honor, service, diversity, leadership, accountability for yourself and for your peers. You have lived what you have learned. Today you receive your diplomas. Tomorrow, the knowledge and habits of mind you acquired here will become the tools for understanding the world to which you go. I should acknowledge that we are celebrating these final exercises without a few of our student athletes. David Pastor is competing in the NCAA Men's Golf Regional Tournament in Columbia, Missouri. Elizabeth Brightwell and Portland Rosen are competing in the NCAA Women's Golf Championships in Tulsa. We wish them luck. Carissa Puretz and Shi Lee of the women's tennis team competed in the NCAA championships yesterday in Athens and could not make it back to be here today. Also yesterday, our women's lacrosse team advanced to the final four. And our rowing team won its fifth consecutive ACC championship. Congratulate, congratulations to them and to the student athletes who could not join us today. The rector of the university. Greetings. On behalf of the Board of Visitors, I welcome you to graduation. This is a wonderful day. It's a glorious day. It's a fantastic day for a celebration. And to the graduates and your families and your friends, we welcome you and we congratulate you. This is a special day, but it's also a special day for your parents, your grandparents, your friends, all of those who have sown into your lives to make this day possible. Indeed, it is a milestone, and we take tremendous pride in what you've done. We're proud of you, and we know that your future is bright. Soon you will become members of the alumni of the University of Virginia. What a tremendous honor. If we've done our job properly, we will have set the tone for the rest of your life. 
While here, we have worked to expand your horizons, to expand your knowledge base, and to expand your abilities. We have worked to instill fundamental principles such as honor, integrity, civility, open and robust inquiry, service to others, responsible citizenship, student self-governance, and these indeed are distinguishing characteristics for this university. You have already made your mark on this university by your participation in academics, volunteerism, research, and extracurricular activities. Indeed, the university is a better place because of your participation, and we thank you for that contribution as we continue to evolve. But we hope that you will join us in our lifetime commitment to this university. We hope and we know that we can depend upon you to give of yourselves as your faculty members, your the staff members have given of themselves. To the extent that we succeed at anything in life, we don't do it on our own. We had help. And in fact, here we give uh, honor to the vision of our founder, who was the first rector. And along with the Board of Visitors, the initial Board of Visitors, he had two former presidents. We give credit to them because they faced many challenges, but they overcame those challenges. And indeed, we also owe a debt of gratitude to those who toiled to build these fine buildings that grace the lawn, the academical village. Some of those hands were black, some of those hands were brown, some of those hands were white, some of those hands were free, some were not. But they not only laid the bricks, they made the bricks. They not only were, they not only laid the cornerstone, they were the cornerstone. And indeed, they were just as proud of their contribution to the new university as the architect himself. We are indeed thankful to Mr. Jefferson for his vision, but we're also thankful to the Board of Visitors and our president, because collectively they have embraced that vision, and they work tirelessly to preserve that for generations to come. We also want to thank our talented faculty and dedicated staff who work every day to make this a better place. They give of themselves in so many, many ways. In fact, many of them have served as parents, surrogate parents, for some of you. We also thank our loyal and dedicated alumni who have been very, very generous to this school. We say merci. Because without them, our journey, your journey, would be quite different. And of course, we must thank your parents. And in fact, I suggest that you take a moment today, give them a hug, give them a kiss, and say thank you. Because they have encouraged you along the way. And indeed, many of them have conspired against you, used every trick at their disposal to help you achieve this milestone. But regardless, we owe them a debt of gratitude. For some of you, this may be, you may be the first in your family to graduate from college. You may be the first to graduate from the University of Virginia. Some of you may represent a long legacy of UVA grads. Regardless of how you got here, we are extremely proud of you. And we ask not much of you by way of thanks, except that you continue to excel in whatever you touch. My grandmother used to say, the only thing that anyone asks of you is that you do your best, if it truly is your best. Well, we're counting on you to do your best. And in so doing, you will not only honor your parents, Mr. Jefferson, and the faculty, but more importantly, you will honor yourselves, and you will honor the investment that you've made over the past several years, as well as those who helped build these fine buildings and this magnificent university. Some of you will go on to become great leaders, we know. But for each of you, we hope that you will attain your destiny. We hope that you will find your passion and that your passion will find you. 
And as one of my favorite authors wrote, may you mount up with wings as eagles. Peace be with you, and may grace go before you to make your path straight. I congratulate you. And now I have the honor to introduce our speaker today, the 75th Secretary of the United States Navy, Mr. Ray Mavis. Mr. Mavis is a native of Mississippi. He attended the University of Mississippi, Johns Hopkins University, where he did his graduate work, and he received a law degree from Harvard University. He served in, as a naval officer for two years on the cruiser USS Little Rock, and thereafter he was a law clerk for, with the Fifth Circuit Court of Appeals. He also served as counsel to the U.S. House Committee on Agriculture, staff member for the Mississippi Governor's Office. In 1984, he was elected state auditor in Mississippi and served for, for four years. He later became the governor of Mississippi. And while he was governor of Mississippi, he was voted by Fortune Magazine one of 10 education governors. And he also gave teachers the highest pay raise in the nation. From 1994 to 1996, he served as the United States Ambassador to Saudi Arabia. And, he was, and during his term in the Middle East, he was involved in several uh, controversial incidences. For one, he was involved in a border crisis involving Yemen and helped deter a crisis with Iraq, as well as trying to uh, deal with the fallout from a terrorist attack. In 19, I'm sorry, 2009, he was nominated by President Obama to be the Secretary of the Navy. The United States has the only global Navy, and he oversees 900,000 individuals and a budget of $170 billion. In June of 2010, President Obama directed him to develop a long-term plan to deal with the aftermath of the Deepwater Horizon oil spill in the Gulf of Mexico. And that recommendation was received by Congress and codified into law in September of 2010 in the Restore Act. He has appeared on 60 Minutes and Nightline. And I understand that a national magazine, which I will not name, uh, has identified him as one of the sexiest men in the world. <laughs> to list all of his accomplishments and his awards would probably take us to Memorial Day. So I won't do that. But I will mention a couple. He received the Martin Luther King Social Responsibility Award and the US Army's Distinguished Civilian Award. Indeed, Mr. Mavis personifies the commitment to, act, to excellence in scholarship, leadership, and citizenship. And he's a perfect graduation speaker for this class. Please join me as we welcome the Secretary of the Navy, Ray Mavis. Thank you so much for that introduction and <laughs> President Sullivan, members of the board, visitors, most of all, class of 2014. And it was, it was Playgirl magazine. <laughs> like Thomas Jefferson, there are certain things I'm going to have put on my tombstone. <laughs> This is a great honor for me to be here, and I, I just want to thank you for giving me this opportunity. The first class started here in 1825, and you know what that means. They've almost paid off their student loans. <laughs> My favorite University of Virginia story, I think, was when Professor William Reddy Eccles, trying to stop the fire that gutted the rotunda, threw 100 pounds of dynamite on the flames. It concerns me that he was a professor. <laughs> we think of them as superior knowledge and experience. I looked up what he taught 
it was math. I had pretty much ruled out science or chemistry of any sort. <laughs> this is not my first time to have the honor to speak at Virginia or to walk the lawn. The first time happened when I was governor, and President George H.W. Bush convened all 50 of the nation's governors here in Charlottesville, and we started here and walked to the rotunda, the 50 governors and the president. And I think the fact that this university, of all universities in this country, was picked for this unique and historic meeting of all the governors and the president to discuss education shows the regard that the excellence of this university is held in and shows its central place in American history. From its very earliest days, you've been one of America's finest. And after all, what else can you expect from Mr. Jefferson's school? It remains in that elite today. It's a testament to the faculty, the staff, the skill, the dedication, the excellence, the talent of everybody sitting here today. Students and friends, supporters. And now to the class of 2014. Congratulations to you. As you take your degree today, you have earned it. You have put in the time, you have made the effort, you have done the work. But I'm going to say what the first two speakers said, you wouldn't be here if it wasn't for a whole lot of people. Behind every single one of you, every single one, are parents and grandparents, siblings, teachers, coaches, friends, mentors, hundreds and hundreds of people, many of whom you probably don't even know, don't even realize the role they played, who have made this accomplishment possible. Now, as the rector said, after the ceremony, and I know you're going to do this because you were going to do it anyway, and I know you're going to do it because the rector advised it, but I'm going to pile on that advisement. Give them a hug. Thank them one more time. There are certain things you can't have too many of. Hugs is one of them. Ice cream falls in that category, too. <laughs> Thank them for what they've done, because in a very real way, today is their day, too. And it's also important to remember those who, in a larger sense, make days like today possible. Those who have worn and are wearing the uniform of our country. Those, those who stand the watch around the world and keep us safe and secure. The grounds here at the University of Virginia have been home to students as wide-ranging as Woodrow Wilson, Edgar Allan Poe, and Tina Fey. Two of my predecessors as Secretary of the Navy, Hillary Herbert and Graham Clater, sat where you sit. From the military, Admiral Richard Byrd, pioneer of naval aviation and polar explorer of both poles, went to school here before he moved to the Naval Academy. So did Fleet Admiral William Bull Halsley, who helped lead our Navy Marine Corps across the Pacific in World War II, and the 18th Commandant of the Marine Corps, Alexander Vandergriff, who was awarded the Medal of Honor for his leadership in the Solomon Islands campaign, went here as well. These military greats from your history are truly extraordinary, but so too are all who serve this country. Every single person 
every single person is just as professional, just as dedicated, just as skilled as those heroes of our past. We ought to be incredibly grateful to those who have made the choice to defend this unique and great country because less than 1%, 1% of America wears the cloth of America. 1% to protect the other 99% of us. 1% who have volunteered and given freely of their time and themselves for years and years. 1% who have sacrificed day after day. They are the 6,000 Marines in Afghanistan today. They are the almost 40,000 sailors deployed around the world on a hundred ships that we have forward deployed at this moment. Those Marines, those sailors are in the islands of the Pacific, they're on the shores of the Black Sea, they're in Central Africa, they're in the South China Sea, they're in Northeast Asia. They're also the soldiers and the airmen in Korea and Germany. They're the Coast Guardsmen in the frigid waters of the Arctic. They went to Indonesia after the Christmas tsunami. They went to Louisiana and Mississippi after Katrina. They went to Japan after the tsunami and earthquake, to Haiti after that earthquake, to New Newark and New Jersey after Sandy, and this past winter to the Philippines after Typhoon Haiyan. They are your friends, they are your brothers, they are your sisters, whether you know them or not. They are making a difference. They're doing something for others. They're doing something beyond themselves. They have endured hardships and family separations, have undertaken an incredibly high pace of operations for the past 13 years that we have been at war. Thousands have paid the ultimate price of their life. Tens of thousands more have come home with scars, visible and invisible, which they will bear with them till their final day. Those who have served and are serving are here today in many roles. As proud grandparents and parents, brothers and sisters, family members, friends, and some of them are sitting with you today. Fellow students who came back on the GI Bill or the Yellow Ribbon Program. And I was honored yesterday to commission ROTC graduates into all our services who form the next link of that unbroken chain. So I'd like to take just a minute as Memorial Day approaches a week from today to recognize the veterans who have served or who are serving, regardless of where you served or when you served, stand up or wave. Let us thank you for what you've done. Now the question I want to ask you graduates is will you join them? Will you serve? Will you be a part of one of the hallmarks of this great university service? Now, I'm not saying, and I certainly hope you don't have to risk your life, although we need skilled and dedicated people protecting this country. The military is far, far from the only way to serve. There are quiet acts of heroism that go on every single day. It's the teacher staying after class to help a struggling student. And who do not get paid enough to do it. <laughs> it's the act of a nurse staying on.
who also, by the way, don't get paid enough to do it. I'm saying that as someone who married a nurse. <laughs> but it's a nurse staying on after the shift is over with to comfort a patient. It's the act of mowing the grass for an elderly neighbor without being asked. Or it's the act of a father putting people through college without ever telling his family. That last thing happened to a close friend of mine who found out her father had put dozens of people through college only at his funeral. When those people came up to her to tell her how much her father had changed her lives. Now it's the service that matters. It's the service to our fellow Americans and it's the service to people in need around the world. I hope that I've learned that in my own life. I graduated from Ole Miss in 1969, the height of the Cold War and of Vietnam. And I learned as a 21-year-old naval officer what it means to be a part of a team with lives at stake, that what the actions that I took could have reverberations on the next watch or the next day, maybe the next year. So do something outside yourself. Do something to make a difference, to give back to this unique nation we are privileged to call home. Do something to help people who may never know you did it or may never know you. Do something that's not just about you or your advancement. Now there's nothing wrong, nothing wrong with making money. And there's nothing wrong with seeing how far you can go in your chosen field. I assume that's the business school. <laughs> and there's nothing wrong with seeing how far you can go in your chosen field. And there's nothing wrong and a whole lot right with taking care of yourself and your family. But at the end of your life, it's not going to be the money or the stuff that you've accumulated. I personally have never seen a hearse with a U-Haul. <laughs> the important things will be the people you've touched, the lives you've made better, the futures you have made brighter. I'm privileged to lead the Navy and Marine Corps, the greatest expeditionary fighting force the world has ever known. And one of the best things I get to do is talk to veterans. Earlier this year, I was in the Marshall Islands, which is a series of tiny atolls in the middle of the Pacific. Seventy years ago, a task force of sailors and Marines landed there during the march across the Pacific. And standing under those rusted guns, still there on the beach, I was reminded just how costly that one battle was. And while I was there, I had the great privilege to have dinner with a group of veterans who had traveled halfway across the world to remember what they'd accomplished there and remember friends they had left there. Every one of these veterans told me how important their service was, how important it was to do something big, to make a difference. They remembered their service like it was yesterday and seven decades had not dimmed the brilliance or the significance. I also get to meet a lot of people who aren't veterans, but remember the two years they spent teaching when they were young, or the time they spent getting something they really cared about started or put into action, or the trip they made and how they helped build a school or a hospital our future for others. One thing is very certain as you go into a very uncertain world. There is no end of things that need doing. We're nearing the end of a generation that earned the title of the greatest generation. That survived the Depression, won World War II, 
came back to build the strongest nation the world has ever known. You have exactly the same opportunity to become a greatest generation. Lauded for your accomplishments 60, 70, 80 years from now. But to do it, you'll have to do something that will last. It doesn't have to be the Marine Corps, but like a lot of graduates from this school, take a look at the Peace Corps. You don't have to run for office, but vote. And get passionately interested and involved in the events of your time, whether they're political or not. Don't let them pass you by. Get involved in your school, your community, your city, your state, your nation. Get involved in your world. The greatest generation changed that whole world. They made it better. That's your opportunity too. And finally, I hope you will do something that you will not see the results of, maybe ever. My father, Raymond Mabus Sr., was a member of that greatest generation. He was a tree farmer in Ackerman, Mississippi. We have somebody from Ackerman, Mississippi here. <laughs> this really is quite a school. <laughs> My dad died when he was 85 years old after a great life. In the last year of that life, he did not cut a single tree, but he planted thousands. Now he knew for an absolute fact that he would never see any money from those trees. He knew for an absolute fact he would never see them grow and mature. He knew for an absolute fact he would never get one bit of benefit from those trees. But he did it anyway. He did it as a matter of hope. He did it as a matter of faith. He did it for me. He did it for his granddaughters that he never met. And he did it for the generations in my family that will never know him and that he will never know. So cherish this day. Cherish your graduation because you have earned it. But when this day is over, go out and earn some things. Earn some things that will be cherished long after this day is gone and long after we are all gone. It's your turn. It's your life. Tomorrow, ask yourself, what trees am I going to plant? Thank you all. Thank you, Secretary Mabus. Now the chair of the University of Virginia Alumni Association Board of Managers. Good morning. Graduates, it's time to move on. It's time to move on from that incredible teacher who really understood you. It's time to move on from the lighting of the lawn, from long nights on the corner, that big win at JPJ. It's time to move on from some close friends you will never, ever forget. It's time. But I'm here to assure you that what you love about this place can and will remain with you. This place has always been more than a classroom or a dorm or a house or a stage or an athletic field. At the University of Virginia, we learn not just from excellent teachers and mentors. We learn from each other. We are bound by our shared experiences, our common values and trust, by minds open to the ideas of others. We are bound by our hard work and, yes, from good times together. These experiences prepared you for a life of purpose. And the good news is, you will carry these experiences with you as UVA alumni. 
As the Alumni Association of the University of Virginia celebrates its 175th anniversary this year, we welcome you to our community of 210,000 graduates living in every state and across the globe. Wherever you go, you will not be far from a fellow Wahoo. Yes, it's time to move on, but wherever life takes you, know that there will be a fellow Wahoo to bring you back to this place. A Wahoo to share an idea or to lend a hand, a Wahoo to trigger a laugh or even a tear of joy. Together with your fellow alumni, you will live the words of James Hay Jr., who in 1903 wrote, I have worn the honors of honor. I graduated from Virginia. Congratulations, welcome, and go Hoos. The President of the University. So thank you, Mr. O'Shea. We appreciated those words. And we know how much we rely upon the alumni. We are fortunate that so many loyal alumni care about their alma mater so much. Those of you who graduate today have benefited from the generosity of our alumni, parents, and friends who make gifts to the university to improve the quality of life and learning here. Because of their generosity in recent years, you've had the opportunity to benefit from wonderful new buildings such as the South Lawn, Bavaro Hall, Rice Hall, Lacey Hall, the, the Emily Couric Clinical Cancer Center, <clears throat> the Ivy Foundation Translational Research Building, Ruffin Hall, the Ruth Kaplan Theater, and many more. In just a few weeks, we will open the new battle building for the UVA Children's Hospital. We have wonderful new programs like the Jefferson Public Citizens, the College Art Scholars, the Contemplative Science Center, the Data Science Institute, the Cavalier Marching Band, and even a new school, the Frank Batten School of Leadership and Public Policy. It's loyal donors who have made all of that possible for us in recent years. And you yourselves have joined this tradition of giving through your class gift with a record-breaking 81% participation from the undergraduate fourth-year class. <clears throat> the School of Medicine class <laughs> achieved an 85% participation rate in its class gift. The School of Law class achieved an 85.3% participation rate. <laughs> and the Darden class <laughs> achieved 99% participation. So thank you all for your generosity, even before you have left the grounds. The Raven Society is the oldest and most prestigious university organization. It recognizes scholarship and other contributions to life here. With us today are seven newly elected alumni members of the Raven Society. I will ask these persons to stand and remain standing as I read their names. Please hold your applause until the entire group has been introduced. These newly elected members are Paul W. Holly, Hobby, Thomas A. Scully, Gregory Fairchild, 
J. Randolph Daniel IV, and Victoria Harker. The Alumni Award winner is Everett L. Doffermeyer, Jr. Please join me in applauding these people. And I thank you for your many contributions to the university. Now I'd like to share a few observations about the class of 2014. These students have embodied the university's mission and values through their commitment to scholarship, research, service, and the promotion of greater understanding of people and cultures around the world. Profiles of some members of the class of 2014 have been shared on the university's website and in the Cavalier Daily in recent weeks. Their stories are remarkable and I encourage you to read them. All graduates here today have their own story of hard work and perseverance. Each one of you has done important things during your time here and we're proud of your achievements. Some of today's graduating students worked diligently to complete their degrees early. In recognition of their effort and as a symbol of their achievement, they are wearing special orange stoles, and I ask them to please stand up now. <laughs> Ninety-five of you have earned your baccalaureate degree in three years, and four more have done it in two years. We congratulate you and I am pleased to welcome you to the Order of the Orange Stole. Awards and scholarships are one measure of the excellence of this class. Among our graduating students today are two Rhodes Scholars, a Fulbright Scholar, two Goldwater Scientific Research Scholars, an Astronaut Scholar, a recipient of the Davis Prize for Peace, two Beckman Scholars, and a Beinecke Scholar. Several more are still being considered for Fulbrights. Four undergraduate degree candidates received university awards for projects in the arts, and 36 received Harrison undergraduate research awards. It's a very accomplished class. About 60% of our graduating students engaged in some form of research while at UVA. They tackled real-world problems to improve lives around the globe. This year's graduating students have been involved in projects to engineer organic biological replacements for diseased tissues, to find the keys to addiction and obesity, to research the economic feasibility of manufacturing medical devices in developing countries, to assess adults' understanding of middle school girls' aggression and victimization, to investigate the role of microfinance programs on social development in La Paz, Bolivia, and to examine the travel diaries of Joseph Cabell, soldier, politician, and friend of Thomas Jefferson, whose namesake building stands behind me. As our entire university community is, this class is committed to service. 68 graduating students participated in the Jefferson Public Citizens Program. Many of today's graduating students volunteered through Madison House as tutors, construction workers, youth mentors, peer counselors, and in many other roles. Some have participated in service learning classes. Some of you have been volunteer firefighters in the seven volunteer firefighting units in Albemarle County. This kind of experience is powerful for everyone involved. You have lived and learned at a truly global university. 1,035 of today's graduating students came to UVA from other countries, bringing an international perspective and enriching life for all of us. And many of our students represented UVA in the world beyond our serpentine walls. More than 27% of today's graduating students participated in some form of education abroad. Thomas Jefferson built a university based on the illimitable freedom of the human mind so that students would be free, in his words, to explore and expose every subject 
susceptible of its contemplation. As you can tell, our students have fulfilled Jefferson's vision by exploring the boundless possibilities of learning. The members of the class of 2014 are now prepared to provide vision and leadership at every level of the careers and communities they enter as they leave this place. Please join me in a round of applause for this accomplished class of 2014. Today's degree candidates are listed in your program, including those who completed their requirements in December or last August. We will award 3,754 baccalaureate degrees, 496 first professional degrees, 2,114 graduate degrees, including 1,664 master's degrees, 25 education specialist degrees, 390 PhDs. 16 Doctor of Education degrees, 3 Doctor of Juridical Science degrees, and 16 Doctor of Nursing Practice degrees. And now, under authority vested in the general faculty, and by it delegated to me, I will award the several degrees. The deans of the university will present the candidates for degrees. Immediately after these exercises, diplomas will be presented at ceremonies around the grounds. The locations are listed on the last page of the finals program. And now the Executive Vice President and Provost of the University. The Dean of the School of Medicine. Will the candidates for the degree of Doctor of Medicine please rise and remain standing? <laughs> Madam President, as Dean of the School of Medicine, I have the distinct honor to present these candidates who have fulfilled the requirements for the degree of Doctor of Medicine. I confer upon you the degree of Doctor of Medicine with all the rights and privileges thereunto belonging. I urge you to use your training to heal the sick, sustain the well, and protect the welfare of the young, the old, and all who seek your care and counsel. Will the doctors of medicine please be seated? The Dean of the School of Law. The candidate for the degree of Doctor of Juridical Science will please rise and remain standing. Madam President, as Dean of the School of Law, I have the honor to present this candidate who has fulfilled the requirements for the degree of Doctor of Juridical Science. I confer upon you the degree of Doctor of Juridical Science with all the rights and privileges thereunto belonging, and I congratulate you on the completion of the highest degree that can be earned in the study of law. I urge you to use your specialized training and research abilities to advance fair and equitable application of the law. The Doctor of Juridical Science will please be seated. The candidates for the degree of Master of Laws will please rise and remain standing. Madam President, I have the honor to present these candidates who have fulfilled the requirements for the degree of Master of Laws. I confer upon you the degree of Master of Laws with all the rights and privileges thereunto belonging and urge you to use your advanced knowledge of the law in pursuit of justice and the betterment of humankind. The Masters of Laws will please be seated. Candidates for the degree of Juris Doctor will please rise and remain standing. 
Madam President, I have the honor to present these candidates who have fulfilled the, re the requirements for the degree of Juris Doctor. I confer upon you the degree of Juris Doctor with all the rights and privileges thereunto belonging and urge you to preserve individual liberties, freedom, and justice through the process of law. Juris Doctors will please be seated. The Dean of the School of Engineering and Applied Science. <laughs> the candidates for the degree of Doctor of Philosophy in Engineering and Applied Science will please rise and remain standing. Madam President, as Dean of the School of Engineering and Applied Science, I have the honor to present these candidates who have fulfilled the requirements for the do degree of Doctor of Philosophy in Engineering and Applied Science. I confer upon you the degree of Doctor of Philosophy in Engineering and Applied Science with all the rights and privileges thereunto belonging. I urge you to pursue discoveries and inventions for the betterment of humankind, to work on the frontiers of applied knowledge, and to communicate to the next generation the excitement of science. The Doctors of Philosophy in Engineering and Applied Science will please be seated. The candidates for master's degrees in engineering and applied science will please rise and remain standing. Madam President, I have the honor to present these candidates who have fulfilled the requirements for master's degrees in engineering and applied science. I confer upon you the master's degree in engineering and applied science with all the rights and privileges thereunto belonging and urge you to pursue rigorous research that advances modern technology and sustains human life. The Masters of Engineering and Applied Science will please be seated. The candidates for the bachelor's degrees in Engineering and Applied Science will please rise and remain standing. Madam President, I have the honor to present these candidates who have fulfilled the requirements for bachelor's degrees in Engineering and Applied Science. I confer upon you the bachelor's degree in engineering and applied science with all the rights and privileges thereunto belonging and urge you to use your knowledge and skills to transform the principles of science and mathematics into new and useful technologies. The bachelors of engineering and applied science will please be seated. The Dean of the Curry School of Education. The candidates for the degrees of Doctor of Philosophy in Education, Doctor of Education, or Education Specialist will please rise and remain standing. Madam President, as Dean of the Curry School of Education, I have the honor to present these candidates who have fulfilled the requirements for the degrees of Doctor of Philosophy in Education, Doctor of Education or Education Specialist. I confer upon you the degree of Doctor of Philosophy in Education, Doctor of Education or Education Specialist with all the rights and privileges thereunto belonging. And I urge you to pursue research that will support teachers' work and advance student learning in the nation's schools and colleges. The Doctors of Philosophy in Education, Doctors of Education and Education Specialist will please be seated. The candidates for the degree of Master of Education or Master of Teaching will please rise and remain standing. <laughs> Madam President, I have the honor to present these candidates who have fulfilled the requirements for the degree of Master of Education or Master of Teaching. I confer upon you the degree of Master of Education or Master of Teaching with all the rights and privileges thereunto belonging and urge you to be creative in stimulating learning and in conveying to your students the responsibilities that belong to educated citizens in a free nation. The Masters of Education and Masters of Teaching will please be seated. 
The candidates for the degree of Bachelor of Science in Education will please rise and remain standing. Madam President, I have the honor to present these candidates who have fulfilled the requirements for the degree of Bachelor of Science in Education. I confer upon you the degree of Bachelor of Science in Education with all the rights and privileges thereunto belonging. And I urge you to use your knowledge, skills, and compassion to enrich the lives of the people whom you will serve in your profession. The Bachelors of Science in Education will please be seated. The Dean of the Darden Graduate School of Business Administration. The candidates for the degree of Doctor of Philosophy in Business Administration will please rise and remain standing. Madam President, I have the honor to present these candidates who have fulfilled the requirements for the degree of Doctor of Philosophy in Business Administration. I confer upon you the degree of Doctor of Philosophy in Business Administration with all the rights and privileges thereunto belonging. I urge you to use your knowledge and research skills to promote innovation, progress, and equity in business administration. The Doctors of Philosophy in Business Administration will please be seated. The candidates for the degree of Master of Business Administration will please rise and remain standing. Madam President, I have the honor to present these candidates who have fulfilled the requirements for the degree of Master of Business Administration. I confer upon you the degree of Master of Business Administration with all the rights and privileges thereunto belonging and challenge you to bring innovation, the entrepreneurial spirit, and ethical integrity to your leadership in practical affairs in this nation and in the world. The Masters of Business Administration will please be seated. The Dean of the School of Architecture. The candidates for de the degrees of Master of Architectural History, Architecture, Landscape Architecture, or Urban and Environmental Planning will please rise and remain standing. Madam President, as Dean of the School of Architecture, I have the honor to present these candidates who have fulfilled the requirements for the degree of Master of Architectural History, Architecture, Landscape Architecture, or Urban and Environmental Planning. I confer upon you the Master's Degree in Architectural History, Architecture, Landscape Architecture, or Urban and Environmental Planning, with all the rights and privileges thereunto belonging, and urge you to shape rich and humane environments that acknowledge the heritage of the past while anticipating the needs of the future. The Masters of Architectural History, Architecture, Landscape Architecture, and Urban Environmental Planning will please be seated. The candidates for the degrees of Bachelor of Architectural History, Bachelor of Science in Architecture, or Bachelor of Urban Environmental Planning will please rise and remain standing. Madam President, I have the honor to present these candidates who have fulfilled the requirements for the degree of Bachelor of Architectural History, Bachelor of Science in Architecture, or Bachelor of Urban and Environmental Planning. I confer upon you the Bachelor of Architectural History, Bachelor of Science in Architecture, or Bachelor of Urban and Environmental Planning, with all the rights and privileges thereunto belonging, and urge you to use your knowledge to preserve and shape environments that inform and magnify the quality of life itself. The Bachelors of Architectural History, Bachelor of Science in Architecture, and the Bachelors of Urban and Environmental Planning will please be seated. The Dean of the School of Nursing. The, the 
candidates for the degree of Doctor of Nursing Practice will please rise and remain standing. Doctor of Nursing Practice, please rise. Madam President, as Dean of the School of Nursing, I have the honor to present these candidates who have fulfilled the requirements for the degree of Doctor of Nursing Practice. I confer upon you the degree of Doctor of Nursing Practice with all the rights and privileges thereunto belonging, and I urge you to apply your specialized knowledge and abilities to the work of enhancing the profession of nursing as you enter practice or as you teach aspiring nurses. The Doctors of Nursing Practice will please be seated. The candidates for the degree of Master of Science in Nursing will please rise and remain standing. Madam President, I have the honor to present these candidates who have fulfilled the requirements for the degree of Master of Science in Nursing. I confer upon you the degree of Master of Science in Nursing with all the rights and privileges thereunto belonging, and I urge you to use your advanced knowledge and skills to promote the health and well-being of the individuals, families, and communities you serve. The Masters of Science in Nursing will please be seated. The candidates for the degree of Bachelor of Science in Nursing will please rise and remain standing. Madam President, I have the honor to present these noisy candidates who have fulfilled the requirements for the degree of Bachelor of Science in Nursing. I confer upon you the degree of Bachelor of Science in Nursing with all the rights and privileges thereunto belonging and I challenge you to promote human health and strive to improve the lives of persons in need. The Bachelors of Science in Nursing will please be seated. Dean of the McIntyre School of Commerce. The candidates for the degrees of Master of Science in Accounting, Commerce, or the Management of Information Technology will please rise and remain standing. Madam President, as Dean of the McIntyre School of Commerce, I have the honor to present these candidates who have fulfilled the requirements for the degree of Master of Science in Accounting, Commerce, or the Management of Information Technology. I confer upon you the degree of Master of Science in Accounting, Commerce, or Management of Information Technology with all the rights and privileges thereunto belonging. I encourage you to use your business knowledge and decision-making skills to help organizations create value and use their resources responsibly for the benefit of citizens throughout the world. The Masters of Science in Accounting, Commerce, and the Management of Information Technology will please be seated. The candidates for the degree of Bachelor of Science in Commerce will please rise and remain standing. Madam President, I have the honor to present these candidates who have fulfilled the requirements for the degree of Bachelor of Science in Commerce. I confer upon you the degree of Bachelor of Science in Commerce with all the rights and privileges thereunto belonging, and I encourage you to create value and improve the world through your business skills. Ever aware of the implications of business decisions on society and our environment. The Bachelors of Science and Commerce will please be seated. The Dean of the School of Continuing and Professional Studies. The candidates for the degree of Bachelor of Interdisciplinary Studies will please rise and remain standing. 
Madam President, as Dean of the School of Continuing and Professional Studies, I have the honor to present these candidates who have fulfilled the requirements for the degree of Bachelor of Interdisciplinary Studies. I confer upon you the degree of Bachelor of Interdisciplinary Studies with all the rights and privileges thereunto belonging. I commend your commitment to lifelong learning, and I challenge you to continue in that spirit as you apply your university education to your chosen profession. The Bachelors of Interdisciplinary Studies will please be seated. The Dean of the Frank Batten School of Leadership and Public Policy. The candidates for the degree of Master of Public Policy will please rise and remain standing. Madam President, as Dean of the Frank Batten School of Leadership and Public Policy, I have the honor to present these candidates who have fulfilled the requirements for the degree of Master of Public Policy. I confer upon you the degree of Master of Public Policy with all the rights and privileges thereunto belonging and urge you to use your new knowledge and skills to provide strong leadership in the careers and communities you enter and to craft wise, morally sound, and well-informed roadmaps for our republic and the greater global community. The Masters of Public Policy will please be seated. And now the candidates for the degree of Bachelor of Arts in Public Policy and Leadership will please rise and remain standing. Madam President, as Dean of the Frank Batten School of Leadership and Public Policy, I have the honor to present these candidates, the first cohort to complete our undergraduate program who have fulfilled the requirements for the degree of Bachelor of Arts in Public Policy and Leadership. I confer upon you the degree of Bachelor of Arts in Public Policy and Leadership with all the rights and privileges thereunto belonging and encourage you to use what you have learned here to serve our nation and the world through your work in government, education, nonprofit, and private sectors. The Bachelor of, uh, Bachelors of Arts in Public Policy and Leadership will please be seated. The Dean of the College and Graduate School of Arts and Sciences. The candidate for the degree of Doctor of Philosophy will please rise and remain standing. <laughs> Madam President, as Dean of the College and Graduate School of Arts and Sciences, I have the honor to present these candidates who have fulfilled the requirements for degree of Doctor of Philosophy. They include candidates in architecture, medicine, and nursing. I confer upon you the degree of Doctor of Philosophy with all the rights and privileges thereunto belonging. I welcome you to the ancient and universal company of scholars. The Doctors of Philosophy will please be seated. The candidates for the degrees of Master of Arts, Master of Arts in Physics Education, Master of Fine Arts, Master of Public Health, and Master of Science will please rise and remain standing. Madam President, I have the honor to present these candidates who have fulfilled the requirements for the degree of Master of Arts, Master of Arts in Physics Education, Master of Fine Arts, Master of Public Health, or Master of Science. I confer upon you the Master's Degree of Arts, the Master's Degree of Arts in Physics Education, the Master of Fine Arts, and the Master of Public Health, or the Master of Science, 
with all the rights and privileges thereunto belonging. I urge you to apply the knowledge you have gained in ways that advance social good and humane values. The Masters of Arts, the Masters of Arts in Physics Education, the Masters of Fine Arts, the Masters of Public Health, and the Masters of Science will please be seated. The candidates for the degrees of Bachelor of Arts and Bachelor of Science in the College of Arts and Sciences will please rise and remain standing. <laughs> Madam President, I have the honor to present these candidates who have fulfilled the requirements for the degree of Bachelor of Arts or Bachelor of Science in Arts and Sciences. I confer upon you the degree of Bachelor of Arts or Bachelor of Science with all the rights and privileges thereunto belonging and welcome you to the fellowship of educated women and men. I urge you to apply the principles of truth and discourse of rigor in inquiry and of pursuit of excellence in your lives, in your professions, and in your engagement with the cultures in which you will live. The Bachelors of Arts and Sciences will please be seated. And now comes the time to say farewell. The class of 2014 will always be special to me because we were first years together. I sat with you in August of 2010 as we faced the rotunda and you had your honor induction. And like all members of my generation, I wondered about the balance of idealism and cynicism that would contend for you during the next four years. But I am no longer wondering. I am confident that idealism has overcome cynicism. For I heard you debate the honor code. I heard you speak passionately about the values in which you believe. I saw you turn out in record numbers to vote. And I know those values remain important to you. Today we will give you something to remind you of those values. It's a booklet of Thomas Jefferson's writings about the three creations for which he wanted to be remembered. Virginia's bill for establishing religious freedom, the Declaration of Independence of the United States of America, and the University of Virginia. A gift from the Alumni Association, this booklet is meant to be a keepsake of this day and a memento of these years when you encountered a complex genius who believed education improves lives and builds character. In the course of your lives, you're going to belong to other communities and cultures, each with its own values and customs. I hope you will take, as you leave here, the values that have distinguished you as students in this community of learners. Most of us experience times in our lives when it is easier to follow the path of self-interest, or to keep quiet when truth is obscured, or to avoid participating in the fray. In these times, you might be tempted to compromise your values to argue an easy point rather than the valid point, to follow blindly, or to lead on others' terms and not your own. When those times come, reread this booklet describing Jefferson's singular creations and recall that each of them came as a result of perseverance, sacrifice, and a personal commitment to enduring values. If we have done right by you, you have already absorbed some of Mr. Jefferson's qualities 
of tough-mindedness, optimism, and determination to effect change. Now as you go, cultivate in yourselves the tenacity to hold elected officials and yourselves to strict account. Engage in the political process that builds durable and systematic change when change is due. Work as educated citizens to protect freedom, your own and the freedom of those who depend upon you. Contribute to the work that is essential to sustaining a democracy. And in all that you do, commit yourselves and your fortunes to the common good. These are our fondest hopes for you. Godspeed and God bless you. Diploma ceremonies will begin after graduates and their guests have had ample time to reach their diploma ceremony sites. If your ceremony is scheduled to begin at 1 o'clock or sooner, please proceed directly to your diploma ceremony venue. And now, would the graduates and the alums please stand for the singing of the good old song. And they're all in town. Nurses recognizing the doctor. 